Everybody knows the list of things that are considered inevitable. Inevitable. Everybody should know that as part of the inevitability of things, that some team is going to gag away a game to TB45 and that that's always going to be on that list of inevitable. You know the list. Inevitable. Death, taxes, and an entire football team peeing down their legs in front of Tom Brady. Lock that up. Those are some of the most inevitable things in life. No matter how old Brady gets, no matter how much he looks like Kevin Bacon, it never fails. It feels like no matter what, some team is going to show up and gag away a game to this dude for the rest of the time, and it happened again. You know, Bacon 45 might be inevitable, inevitable. and it did happen again, but I will say this. He made the inevitable look really difficult last night. In fact, he made inevitable look damn near impossible last night. On top of that, he made 45 years old look 45 years old. Except for those moments when he was raging around, throwing tantrums, and screaming at people, including his punter. Then he made 45 years old look like 8 years old. For essentially 55 minutes of that game last night, that was the kind of night that old Bacon Face was having. A terrible night. A nightmarish night. One of the single worst nights of his career. And yet somehow, some way, this guy walks away a damn conquering hero. With everybody acting like he just won an eighth Lombardi. Because for most of the night, the fact is, Bacon could not make any throws. And the, quote, suckaneers were going full suckaneer and could not move the ball at all. Tom was doing Tom things, screaming, stomping, and spazzing out on the field after every missed throw, which was essentially every single throw. I mean, it was that bad. It was horrific and sloppy as hell. It was an unwatchable mess. Which is why and how Tampa found themselves down 16-3 to in the final five minutes in the first place. But that's when New Orleans apparently realized, you know, inevitable. We don't want to win this game. It's like they thought collectively. Wait, hey, hey, what are we doing here? What's going on? We don't want to win. In fact, what we really want like, is to I gag and choke and die on national TV in this game. And in that way... The Saints actually had a really successful night because they absolutely did succeed in gagging and choking and dying right there on national TV. It's almost like they held up and said, time to die on three. One, two, three. Time to die. (laughs) Orleans starts to drop passes. They run out of bounds on a yard short of the marker on a critical third down. They take a brutal too many men in the huddle penalty in the red zone. They even got a second chance at the very end of the game to make one last stop. Get the hell off the field. Get out of there. Don't finish the choke. Save yourselves. But they couldn't do that. Because after being down 16-3, to with just over three minutes to go, the Bucs actually managed to score twice in the final 19 seconds to win that game. The first one got called back for a hold, and then two plays later, they somehow did it again. Like I said, inevitable. Inevitable Inevitable. that some team is going to roll into Tampa and suddenly forget how to play football at the worst possible time. The Saints went from utterly dominating the Bucs defense, or I should say offense, for 55 minutes to essentially welcoming the Bucs into their end zone with their Matador D for the win twice. Twice. It's due for them. Now, if it seems like I'm being unnecessarily harsh or going with a hot take, I'm not. I'm not. The numbers bear this out. Teams, check this out. Teams over the last five years were 2 and 530 coming into last night when leading by 13 or more in the final four minutes of regulation. Two wins out of 532 chances until the Saints Saints snatched defeat from the jaws of victory last night. Until the Saints straight up choked and took a dump in their pants. You have a big dump in your pants. How else would you describe what they did? Even 
Bacon himself was 0-37 in his career during that same exact scenario in the regular season. Even Bacon has never quite seen a regular season collapse like the one that happened last night, like the one that collapsed right into his own lap. The dude just passed Pinky for most fourth-quarter comebacks in NFL history, but he's never had one fall into his lap quite like that one. And, of course, in response to that total New Orleans meltdown, Bacon Face ran around like he had just won the Super Bowl. Forget the fact that we just watched this guy play one of the worst games ever. Let's just act like he came back from down 28-3. I'm surprised there wasn't a whole damn trophy ceremony right there on the field after that game. Dude all of a sudden went from the most red-assed he'd ever been to the happiest he'd ever been. He's running around dropping let's effing goes on national TV. If everybody just acts like everything is fine, then everything will be just fine. Just act like the team just won the Super Bowl and then act like the first 55 minutes of that game never even happened. But the first 55 minutes of that game did in fact happen. And they were borderline dominant for New Orleans. In fact, they were borderline erotic. Borderline erotic. For Saints fan. Brady was getting his ass kicked. The Saints offense was actually moving the ball at will against that Bucks defense. And then came the gagging and the choking and the dying and the predictably oh-so-sad Andy Dalton post-game presser. I feel like a broken record. I feel like a broken record saying and asking to see some Jameis Winston. I feel like a broken record asking to see some Jameis freaking Winston. I mean, seriously, is this really too much to ask? Last night just proved my point. Even on the Red Rifle's best night, he's still the Red Rifle. He's now lost eight straight primetime games for a reason. Even when it's not really, truly his fault, the end result is always the same. It's never going to change. You know why? It's inevitable. 